Hello Android developers! In this video, we are going to dive into an important concept in Android development, BOM or Bill of Material Dependencies. If you have worked with big libraries like Jetpack Compose or Firebase, you have probably come across this term. But what exactly is a BOM dependency? Why is it important? And how can we create our own BOM for our SDK and their dependencies? Let's find out. A BOM dependency is a special kind of dependency that specifies the versions of a group of related libraries that are known to work well together. By using a BOM dependency, you can avoid specifying the versions of each individual library in your app and let the BOM handle the compatibility for you. This can simplify your dependency management and reduce the risk of version conflicts or outdated libraries. In another word, BOM is shifting the hard work to the library developers so they come up with a list of final versions dependencies that are made for each other and work fine together with no compile time or runtime issues. As an example, we can take a look into the Jetpack Compose BOM dependencies package contents. For this purpose, we can open Google's Maven repository and search for it. Inside, you can see only a BOM file. Let's see what's inside. A BOM is essentially a special kind of BOM project object model file that is used to control the versions of a project's dependencies. It provides a central place to define and update those versions. This means it contains dependency management information specifying the versions of the dependencies that should be used. The BOM has packaging nature of POM. Here is what you might typically find inside a BOM. Dependency management sections where all the project dependencies are declared. These are the libraries that your project depends on. Group ID, artifact ID, and versions. This information is used by Maven to locate and download the dependencies. You can think of a BOM as a directory that declares all the related project versions, thus saving your version resolution efforts. Once your BOM is imported into your project descriptor, you no longer need to declare the version when declaring a dependency because it will be inherited from that imported BOM. To use a BOM dependency in your app, you need to add the platform keyword before the BOM dependency declaration in your app level build.gradle file. For example, if you want to use the Jetpack Compose BOM, you can add this line. Then you can add any Jetpack Compose library that you need without specifying the versions. The BOM will automatically resolve the correct versions of the libraries. A side note is that you should also define BOM for test and Android test dependencies. Now let's talk about how you can create your own BOM for your SDKs and their dependencies. If you are developing your own SDKs or libraries that have multiple dependencies, you can create your own BOM to make it easier for your users to integrate them into their apps. For this demo, I will create an example Java library module. Later, I will add Maven publication plugin to it so we can publish it to our Maven local. Running the Gradle Publish to Maven Local task builds the library and puts it inside your Maven Local, which by default is a folder inside your users folder called .m2.
We are all set. Let's create our own BOM module. The simplest way of having a BOM module is by creating a Java module and then modifying the Gradle file. Let's first add the Maven publication config. Now you can specify the dependencies that you want to include in your BOM using the API keyboard. For example, if you want to depend on the JSON library, you can add it like this. And we can also add dependency to our library module. By the way, I'm using GitHub's Copilot plugin, which suggests autocompletes and sometimes it makes mistakes that you have to be careful using it. Okay, problem is solved. And as you can see, the PAM file is generated and it includes all the Java plugin dependencies defined in our Gradle file plus the Kotlin standard library. To remove that, we can remove the Kotlin plugin and publish again. An issue with this simple solution is that we also will get an empty jar file. To have a clean BOM publication without any extra artifacts, you can use the open source Gradle BOM generator plugin. The setup is easy. Just keep in mind that all the modules to be included in the BOM must have the Maven publication plugin applied and configured. You can also include external dependencies or exclude modules from your BOM. Let's apply this plugin to our BOM module and see it in action. We don't need Java plugin and dependencies anymore and we just have to tweak our publication a bit.
With no configuration, the plugin will include all your modules inside the bomb. Now let's also add JSON back to our bomb using the bomb generator configurations. For the test purpose, we can add our bomb library to the example app we have here. By the way, here I'm using Maven Local, but finally you need to publish your BOM to a repository such as Maven Central or Jitpack so your users can access it from their apps. One last tip for SDK developers. Ensure that your BOM is well documented with clear descriptions of each part and its purpose. Create a table of dependencies and their versions inside your BOM documentation to make sure the user can have that without opening your palm file and looking for them. And that's it. I hope this video has helped you understand what a palm dependency is, why it's important, and how you can create your own. Remember, using a palm can greatly simplify your library user's dependency management and help avoid version conflicts. So why not give it a try in your next project? Thanks for watching and supporting, and do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye.